Today on the Wide World of Materials, we're going to talk about bicycles. Bicycles have been around since 1817 when Baron von Dreis of Germany invented the walking machine. This first bicycle had a frame and wheels that were made entirely out of wood. However, this bicycle had no pedals. It was powered by the rider pushing it along with his feet. The wood frame was strong, but the wheels weren't practical for riding on cobblestone streets, so it never really caught on as an effective means of travel. After that, it took a while for bicycles to reappear in society. Its next appearance was in 1864 with the Velocipede. This next generation of bicycle had pedals attached to the front wheel that made it especially fast. The frame was still made of wood, and so were the wheels, for a while. Eventually, they started making the wheels out of metal, but this led to an uncomfortable side effect. The metal wheels were solidly connected to the frame and transferred every bump and rattle to the rider from riding on cobblestone streets. The result was a horribly uncomfortable ride and earned this design the name of Bone Shaker. To avoid this side effect, indoor bicycle tracks were built in large cities where people could ride comfortably. The next bicycle is probably the most well-known ancestor in the bicycle family tree, the high wheel bicycle or penny farthing. This generation was the first to actually be called a bicycle. The original high wheel bicycle in 1870 was the first all metal cycle as metallurgists had learned how to make metal parts that were small, light, and strong. To reduce the rattle of the bone shaker, the high wheel bicycle had solid rubber tires. The bicycle was relatively expensive and was only used by young, wealthy young men. Women were unable to ride these bicycles because of their skirts. They and more dignified gentlemen rode the high wheel tricycles so they could join in the fun. The high wheel bicycles weren't the safest. A small rock could cause the rider to tumble over the front and onto the pavement. Thus, taking a header was born. To alleviate this problem, the smaller wheel became the front wheel, but the pedals were still on the larger wheel, now the back wheel. These bicycles could now go down steps without losing their rider. By 1880, metallurgy had made further advances. There were now metals that could make a light chain and sprocket mechanism that could be powered by pedaling and still be durable. This meant that you could have two equal sized tires and go farther with less pedaling. Soon front and rear suspensions were created to make a smoother riding bicycle. With Dr. Dunlop's invention of the pneumatic tire, bicycles of two same sized wheels were now safer and cheaper than the high wheeled bicycles from a decade earlier. The common man could use it for reliable transportation and women eventually ditched skirts for clothes more suitable for riding a bicycle. This mass adoption of bicycles had a profound impact on women's freedom as illustrated by this quote from Susan B. Anthony in 1896. The bicycle has done more for the emancipation of women than anything else in the world. Bicycles remained popular for many decades but their popularity diminished with the invention of the automobile. Some of the big companies from back in the heyday in bicycles Sears Roebuck, Mead, and eventually Schwinn started making bikes that had elements of motorcycles or automobiles and marketed them to kids. These now classic designs were extremely heavy, most weighing in at about 65 pounds. As time wore on, the heavy designs were replaced with lighter and simpler designs built for adults. These new designs have since been expanded upon and specialized for various types of riding. Racers, mountain bikes, recumbent bikes, and cruisers. Many of these designs use aluminum and titanium as the frame material to lighten the weight of the bike. In third world countries, however, manufacturers are making bicycles out of bamboo because they lack the materials to make traditional bike frames. Modern racing bikes use carbon fiber frames that are just as strong as metal ones, but are a fraction of the weight. We hope you enjoyed our presentation on the history of bicycles. Tune in next time for more adventures in the wide world of materials.